Hello, how you doing Mike Bradley? Hope you're doing well as always. So, this is a very exciting video for me and hopefully for you the viewer. Um, as you probably can guess from the title of this video, this is going to be part one of my parts caster build. So vlog one, if you will. I don't know how many vlogs there will be. There could just be two. There could be about 20. We will soon find out on the journey together. Um, one thing I should say before we go any further, if you're a complete and utter guitar geek, love talking about guitars and gear, but mainly guitars and love hearing the tales of a, a madman's journey and want to also share your geeky journey in the comment section below, this is the video for you. If you're not into that stuff, <laughs> You probably won't like this video, <laughs> so I'll just get that out of the way now. But um, but yes, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that I posted a picture of a guitar body, which I'll get to in a minute, and um, I kind of announced a week or two ago that I'm going to be building a parts caster. I've been kind of half jokingly calling it Brad Caster. <laughs> because why not? And it's something what I've been wanting to do really for about 15 years and it's been bubbling about. So before I show you the bits and talk about it and whatnot, let me just take you back like 15 odd years ago. So I, I remember you used to be able to get like, I imagine you still can, guitar kits. You could buy the body, neck and, you know, pickups or whatever kind of stuff, you know, for X amount of hundreds of pounds. And my granddad who, you know, was my hero. Um, he uh, was, you know, that typical grandfather who was good at everything. He was good at carpentry, he was good at plumbing, he was, you know, just the, the stereotypical great handyman guy, you know, he was fantastic. And uh, I used to say to him, like, oh, I'm thinking about getting a guitar kit, you know, would you would you build a guitar with me? And he'd be like, yeah, of course, you know, yeah, let's, let's do it. And then me being me, I would procrastinate and pull it off and wouldn't get round to it and then life happens and uh, unfortunately my, my granddad passed away so and this was back in 2008 scarily so you know that was very very sad still is sad but you know we'll, we'll go past that so I just kind of put you know building a guitar to the to the back burner in a way you know I just like oh I wanted to do it with granddad and you know life happens and that's it you know but it's always been iggling in my mind uh, about doing it and then uh, I would see people doing parts, casters and all that kind of stuff. And then when I was uh, coming back from the NAM show in January, I was at the airport and if you've been to the NAM show, a lot of times, you know, the week or so or a few days after uh, NAM, uh, the airport is just filled with lots of musicians <laughs> coming back from the NAM show, you know, flying back wherever they live. And I was, uh, you know, having my lunch and I bumped into my buddy Brian Love, lovely guy known via Hampstead Amps and whatnot. And uh, we were just chatting for ages and he was telling me about his parts casters he's made, you know? And it just kind of got the kind of cogs going again of it. And it relighted my fire. So thank you, Brian, if you're watching this. Uh, I've already thanked you anyway when I've messaged you, but I'll, I'll publicly say it. Uh, and then about two weeks ago, I was on Facebook and I saw a guy uh, Stefan, hello Stefan if you're watching, I saw he had these you know, uh, bodies from Guitar Build and he was building a parts cast and I was like, I'm gonna do it. You know, we're in lockdown, you know, we want things to do, I was like, I'm gonna do it. So I went on guitarbuild.co.uk, let me show you the box. So I went on guitarbuild.co.uk, he's going camera two there for a better look, right? I should say, this is not a sponsored video. They're not paying me to do this. This is, I paid everything top dollar for this. This is not sponsored in any way, shape or form. I just wanted to share where I got it from. So I went on there. I, I will unveil the body in a minute. Went on there and you know, kind of you can get one piece, you can get two piece, you can get three piece bodies, you can get, you know, all the different woods and whatnot. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I thought, well, I want a strat. I want a vintage-esque strat but I haven't got a Strat with a humbucker in the bridge. Uh, and I've got three Stratocasters, um, and no, all traditional three single coils and whatnot. So I thought, let's do, you know, like a vintage-esque Strat, but with a, you know, humbucker in the bridge, so a HSS, as they say. 
So uh, a three piece were quite cheap, and I thought, let's not do a three piece body, let's go for a two piece. One piece was getting a little bit expensive. I may do that, if this turns out really well, I may do another one and do a one piece one, but I thought just for financial reasons, I'll, I'll stick with a two piece. And I paid a little bit extra so I could uh, pick the woods, so then they email you um, three pictures of different woods and you can pick and I was like oh I like the look of that and I, I spoke to my girlfriend I was like what would you like out of this she went oh that one and she went for the same one as me you know because it was pretty and uh, I paid about an extra couple of quid couple of pounds sorry um, to uh, have uh, some you know uh, paint samples wood samples so I can check the paint uh, and then two weeks later not even two weeks about ten days later I received this, uh, which completely blew me away. Let me go on camera two here. So the grain on this is fantastic. You know, is I was so completely blown away how good this body is. Um, it's it's really good, you know. And then so of course I've got it, and I've been talking to it like you are going to be the best guitar in. <laughs> you're like me doing you start knocking it and you know it's, it's it's fantastic so this is the body of the guitar uh which like i say and i now like when you hear about these two pieces and three pieces and that uh there i can see it's literally bang in the middle a bit of wood there bit of wood there um but no very very happy with how this body is thus far so um i've got my body and I spoke to my buddy Darren Horton from da uh, Daniel's Guitars. If you're a regular viewer of mine, you would have heard that name. I've spoken about it before. I've shown some of his guitars. He's built um, some fantastic guitars. I, I remember a gold top I've had, and uh, I did. It, I think the video is called uh, "Do you remember this guitar? What do you think of this guitar?" I think it was called. I'll put links in the description box below. But Darren um, is a fantastic luthier. He's amazing, and. I dropped him a message and told him what I'm thinking of doing and um, this is before I kind of did the order and he said look you want to put your money on a good neck that's the main thing and then he said look I'll build you a neck so he could he's just a sweetheart so and not only that then I said well if you're going to build me a neck do you want to put it all together for me <laughs> so and paint it and whatnot so that gets to my next thing I was then thinking what you know what 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 colours do I want? That's the thing, you know, even before, no, once I decided on the HSS, I was like, okay, now what colour do I want? Because I've always, no, if it was a regular three single coil, I probably would have done a cool two burst or something like that. Um, but I was like, well, you know, this is kind of a, a, going to be a super vintage strap, so to speak. So I was like, I don't really want that. And then I thought, well, I like white. You know, I call white strap with a humbucker. Uh, uh, then maybe, you know, and then I remembered uh, Clapton in the 80s and 90s, early 90s. He had this kind of charcoal, I think it was called, his actual one is pewter. I think it is P-E-W-T-E-R. But this kind of charcoal kind of colour. And I remember seeing him and I remember seeing uh, a picture in a Fender advertisement of Brian Adams with the similar colour and basically a charcoal frost metallic and I was like yes that's what I'm going to go for a charcoal frost metallic with like a pur uh, purple with a brown tortoiseshell guard I was like yeah let's go for that so I started so I was talking to Darren about this on text back and forth bless his heart like I must have just been inundating his, his message box. <laughs> I must have texted about 40 t messages in a space of an hour or something. I was just so excited and I am so excited. So he's, I, I said to him, he goes, well, have you got any pictures? So I'm training the internet and I found this picture which I'll put up now by the power of editing. So ignore the headstock. I don't want to paint the headstock. I hate the look of painted headstocks uh, on a strap that is. But that basically is what I'm going to go for. You've got the two single coils and you've got the humbucker. Now, I've always liked the idea of, on a strap guitar, having the cover off. But I think that looks really cool there. So, Darren said he's got um, a Mojo, Mojo, uh, not Mojo, sorry. It is a Bare Knuckles, uh, bear with me, I'm look at my phone. Bare Knuckle Mule. So, he said I've got a Bare Knuckle Mule, like, 
around the workshop, you're, you're welcome to have that. I was like, oh, cool. So that's for the humbucker. And then I thought, single coils, I've got my prototype um, pickups in my blue strap, which, I've, which I'm doing with Radio Shop pickups. So I thought I could put them in. So I'm actually gonna drop them a message. Paul, if you're listening, watching this before I message you, uh, <laughs> I'll be getting in touch with you. But I wanna message them and talk to them. But I think at the moment, I wanna put the neck and middle of those prototype pickups in this. And then at the moment, it's looking like this uh, bare knuckle mule gun in for the humbucker. And that's got a cover. So I thought, well, okay, so brown tortoiseshell guard, that. And then I was, I mean, I went about gold hardware. And I thought, and I was talking to Darren, he's like, no, I don't like gold hardware. I was like, because oh. at first I was thinking about doing a black strat as well. I remember like a complete black, like a metallic black with the brown tortoiseshell guard. I thought about that and I saw that Brian had that as well and that sparked my loins. <laughs> so, um, but I thought, nah, Brian's got a black one. I can't, I can't copy him, you know, could he had gold hardware as well. So I thought about having the gold hardware, but Darren kind of put me off from it. So I'm gonna be doing this, the standard stuff, which I've got in there, which I'll show you in a second. So I thought, stuff it, order the body, body's ordered. I'm going to Darren's as soon as I finish this, gotta to go to him because I've screwed the neck in my Gibson 345 up because I'm a plunker. So he's gonna look at that for me. So then I went on, who was it? All guitar parts, I think they're called. If I'm wrong, I will put the name there. Again, not paid. I paid my own money from it, uh, and I ordered some stuff. So, uh, actually, it'll tell me in what it is, because it's got the invoice here. It is Axe Caster. Oh, guitar. Axe Caster. Yes, yeah, so I went on Axe Caster's web. Actually, I phoned up the guy. I spoke to a lovely guy, Gavin, I think his name is. And he kind of talked me through everything, because I was like, I want to make sure I get the good stuff. So, um, and Darren gave me like a shopping list as well. So. Uh, I got some Goto machine heads, camera two. I thought I set up a second camera so I can kind of come here. So, you no, know, kind of the vintage buttony kind of ones, you know, so I've got those. Uh, and then I've got, what's in this one? Is this the neck plate? No, it's not the neck plate. This, is, ah, this is the jack. So we've got a jack here. Now at the moment, this is all kind of clean. I don't, I said to Darren, I was like, look, I don't want a relic. And he's like, well, I'll do a little bit. I said, no, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't want it chipped or ding. I want the thinnest finish possible so that it will wear properly. And I'm quite a heavy handed player anyway. So um, I think he might kind of do a bit of checking on it. But I said, I don't want no dings, all right? So we may have to put them in some coffee or something just to kind of give it so it's not quite so shiny. Um, so we got that there, let's keep everything nice and neat here. We've got some screws, oh, we've got a string tree. All right, now I hate the look of two string trees. On my blue strap, um, again, if you're an avid viewer, if not, go back and check out some videos. I've got, I've had, my blue strap had two string trees and I took one off because I hate the look of two. I think it just looks wrong. I actually don't like string trees at all, but I suppose vintage-esque, I've gone for the, is this a butterfly? Well, I don't know if you can really see it in there, but the kind of vintage string tree, you know. Uh, I've got some screws. Uh, I've got the most expensive thing on hardware so far. Uh, I've got the Goto vintage trim. I want one of those, there you go, got that. Uh, I can't remember how much it was, it's 90 quid or something like that, quite expensive. Um, let's put this back in here. Uh, what else have I got here? I've got some, uh, you know, knobs volume knob control knobs at the moment these aren't too these aren't too bad you know they don't, don't look super super clean you're gonna focus there i think that's focusing uh yeah they're not you know we'll see how it looks on the guitar when it's done uh and what's this here oh some strap buttons you know again kind of the vintagey-esque ones you're gonna focus there i think it's kind of focusing but yeah the vintage kind of buttons there uh what we got here oh this is a for the jack socket to go in and we've got a neck plate and i think this was a b-stop neck plate so it, no, it wasn't but i said hey, i don't mind if it's a little bit i mean it looks pretty it's got a little blemish on the back but a neck plate all right so that's all the 
the hardware I have thus far. So the only things I haven't got, I haven't got my guard yet. I've ordered a scratch plate from Crazy Parts and they're based in Germany. So I'm waiting on that. Uh, I was hoping to be here by now, but because I want my neck uh, down to look at my neck because I need, it's one of these on the truss rod and this one's too small. So if I go here, it's, it's not, of course it's not a normal Allen key for the Gibson 345. Are you gonna go and focus? You're not gonna go and focus, are you? No, but it's one of those. It's one of those ones, you know, it's like a little hammer. This is too small, so I want him to look at it for me because he's a superstar. So I thought, let's just get things going, get the body kind of, we can get the body kind of painted up and whatnot. So that is where we are. So I, I haven't got my guard and I need to order some pots and I wasn't sure on if it's a 250 or 500, because I want about to split the humbucker um, into a, a single coil, you know? So I need, I do need to order them still. So I don't know if Darren can help me with that or I'll get back onto Axcaster and order them from there. But yeah, man, I'm very, very excited. Um, so like I say, this is all the bits and then I will, I'll speak to Darren and see if we can get some bits on my, It'd be cool no, to do a little bit of spraying, just even if it's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, I'm looking forward to keeping you updated on how it's all progressing. And uh, I've got a good feeling. I've got a good feeling this will be a goodie. So um, yeah, a little bit of a ramble vlog, but again, if you're a geek, you like all this stuff. So have I missed anything? So just to, just to summarize, we're going for a charcoal frost metallic paint job. Brown tortoise, this is thus far. Brown tortoise guard, uh, and then two single coils and a humbucker. I should say that once I received the body, let's get the body back up again. Once I received the body, I was in two minds um, about the color because the grain on this is so nice. I thought it would be kind of sad um, to kind of cover it you know, with a, with a solid paint. And I was thinking about doing like a white, but I'd already ordered the guard and the guard was about 30 pounds, 30, nearly 40 quid. Um, so I was like, oh, I've got that. So I could do white with it. You know, I didn't want to waste any money really, you know. And I thought, no, I want the charcoal frost. It's going to be a thin finish after about, hopefully, no, five years. I would have thought if it's the guitar, I think it's going to be, It'll be pretty worn anyway, and I'll be shoving wood again. So, um, but no, this is, this could go, this is go two ways. It's either going to be the best guitar I've ever had. Um, but you know, that's not fair to say, but you know, I think it's going to be a really, really good guitar. Let's, let's just let's say that, you know, and uh, if it is as good as I think it's going to be, I may carry on down this route with parts casters, you know, but. The Bradcaster, and uh, my granddad's nickname is Ace, and because, you know, I've always thought about granddad, I might find a really cool Ace sticker or something to put on the back, you know, but here it is. Um, yeah, have you done this before? Have you done parts casters? Let me know how you've got on with them. Um, it'd be, like I say, I'm very excited to see how this kind of goes. I wish I was kind of capable of doing this stuff, you know, um, I, I might certainly try and pick up tips from Darren. But uh, do check out Darren, Daniel's Guitars is his company. Um, I'll put a link to his Facebook and his website as well because he's, he's really helping me out. Um, yeah, look forward to sharing more. Anyway, end of vlog one. I'll uh, look forward to sharing the next update with you. And if you haven't already, do you know, uh, follow me on Instagram. I'll do some little stories and that on there. Probably later on, straight after this, when I get to Darren's workshop. Uh, social distancing, of course. Anyway, lots of love. See you soon. Mike Brady sign out. Bye. Fade away.